Hi everyone, welcome to Camila Cava Food Photography Podcast, a place where I interview talents in food photography industry to learn ins and outs and help you and myself grow food photography career. Today's lovely guest is Emma Ivana, a talented cake artist, business coach and a photographer from Finland. I've been following her beautiful Instagram for a while now and I decided to finally reach out and talk to her because Emma has worked with brands such as Nespresso, Dr. Utkor and Baileys and is one of the authors of a worldwide published book Designer Cake Decorating written by 12 of the world's best cake designers. I was sure she'll have a lot to tell us. Emma's strong branding and positioning is what led her to many, many exciting opportunities. And this is what we will talk about mostly today. So here we go. Let's welcome Emma. Hi, Emma. Hi. Welcome to the podcast. It's super nice to have you here. Thank you so much. It's so nice to be here. Yay. Um, so for the listeners that might not know you, could you introduce yourself? Uh, I am a cake artist and a photographer from Finland, Helsinki, and I write baking books and design bakeware, and I'm also a painter. So. Oh, wow. Yeah, I've seen, I've seen your resume and I've seen how much you, you've done and you have achieved it, so I thought it's super exciting. Um, but so my question would be, firstly, how long have you been photographing now? Uh, about six years, like professional photography. Wow. And so, cake artist? Uh, about the same time, like uh, mm-hmm. I first started making cakes and then I needed to get really good photos of them. So that's why I started to get interested in photography. And how did you got into this business? Uh, <laughs> it's a long story, but <laughs> I'm going to try to be quick so I was <laughs> I was studying uh, civil engineering and um, like my profession is a master of science in technology but then like when I was studying I went to Malaysia to be an exchange student and somehow I ended up living on an island where there were many many cake shops like really amazing cakes and I've never seen anything like that and I just fell in love with the cake art like I was just so inspired of seeing all the cake artists like working there and what they were doing. And when I came back to Finland, I just started making cakes as a hobby and I felt just so passionate about it. And really soon it became a business. So that's how I started. Wow. <laughs> really cool. And um, yeah, that's all super exciting. And in terms of the photography, do you also work for clients as a photographer or do you photograph your own cakes? Uh, I work for clients, so uh, first it was just uh, to photograph the cakes for the clients who ordered cakes, but now um, for a couple of years I haven't been making cakes anymore, it's more selling the photography. So Interesting. Yeah, so for magazines, for uh, baking product packaging, advertising photography, everything. Well, like awesome. many, many different things. <laughs> Sick, nice. And uh, how did you become good in photography? Because I love your images. They look so nice and so romantic, actually, I think. Ah, thank you so much. Um, I've been learning just um, by testing everything, trying. I, I really have, I don't have an education to be a photographer. But mm-hmm. I think it's like, um, I've always loved art. I've been always painting and drawing so it's a it's a lot about the composition and colors and then I uh, as I just took like thousands and thousands and thousands of photos I learned to use the light better and then like uh, yeah I, I used to like watch videos on YouTube like how to how to make good um, food photography but in the end it's it's about finding your own own techniques and own style mm-hmm. and then I just try to follow that <laughs> yeah definitely practicing 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 is what makes it uh, perfect indeed yeah oh yeah nice and uh, you mentioned that you watched some videos do you have like specific videos you watch or you just looked for specific reasons to like how to do the 
daylight perfect kind of things you know what i mean uh yeah it was uh many years ago when i watched those videos um it was because i kind of i had a little bit of pressure to become a good photographer because i i made a book deal with the publisher and they they suggested like why don't you take photos yourself and i was like uh. Okay, Sick. yeah, nice. uh -huh. uh, that's great. But then I like, you know, went and, and I bought a better camera and I was like, okay, I have six months time to learn how to take photos that are good enough for a book. And, and then um, what I used to watch on YouTube was uh, about how to uh, use natural light in, in the photos and how to get the kind of like moody uh, light. I, I like uh -huh. to use that even though my photos are also a bit like romantic but I like the contrast yeah. it, there's like depth in it like it's not too cute which is really yeah. easy to happen with For sure. like I don't want it to look like too cute I want it to yeah. look like art <laughs> so balance yeah. between the moody and the cute <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 you have that specific style indeed yeah really crazy uh, but wow so the book deal you've got and then you learn to, yeah, wow, that's a really good push as well. Yeah. Super exciting, super exciting thing, yeah. So you photographed yourself for your book. How many books did you launch, by the way? Um, I think now it's eight. And, <laughs> and now I'm, I'm writing the next one that would, will be published uh, in September. Wow, how exciting. Yeah, it's great. I love, I love writing I love uh -huh. designing cakes and taking photos. So books are something that I really, really love to do. So oh, that's really so nice. exciting. Yeah. But I heard it's quite a process to, yeah, publish your own book. So I wonder, like, how long does it take for you per book? Because I heard, as, let's say, one of my interviews said it took three years from the idea to actually developing a book. How does it work with your books then? Yeah, well, the one that I'm currently writing, I've had the idea for it for like about four years, and now it's becoming a reality. <laughs> so. Actual, oh, so exciting! In September already. Woo yeah, yeah. It's what does it look about if it's not a secret? I don't know if you're allowed to say that or not. Uh, sorry. Uh, can you read the question? Yeah, sure. What is the book about, if it's allowed for you to say? I'm not sure how it all works, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, well, I can um, tell something about it already. Um, awesome. And uh, it's about, like, um, my best recipes. It's like mm -hmm. a collection of all the best recipes I've designed during these, these years. And um, my philosophy with baking is that I love recipes that are really, really simple. Mm -hmm. I kind of, uh, I think, like an engineer because of my education. And I brought that into the baking world. And I started to design recipes that chemically, like, I, I think how to make things more simple. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I love to decorate cakes. But they go together because I like the idea that I can make the cake really fast. And then I can enjoy decorating it. And then it's not too okay. much time. Uh -huh. So it's it's a combination of those. So so decorating techniques and then super easy recipes also. So sick. Yeah, and and um, for this book, there's gonna, gonna also be like um, more uh, photography art. So it's gonna be even more photography based than any of my previous wow. books. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's exciting. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, because when I went on your website, I really noticed um, that you have this clear message and clear positioning about the fact that um, your recipes are indeed easy, that you have more time to actually decorate what you've just said. And um, I thought that's a really smart idea and very clear positioning for all your, um, let's say, followers and readers. So, and I also was wondering then, um, do you have a business coach or did you come up with all the positioning and website design and everything yourself? I did everything myself and actually I am a business coach <laughs> so <laughs> they're like, that, uh, like... That, that's why it looks thought out and that comes yeah. from my education like I used to study like um, industrial management and there there's also like things like branding and and um, yeah like I've 
I've coached like other companies for three years now and also like um, city uh, governments and uh, educational establishments um, in Finland about branding, about innovation, uh, about um, creative business, about Instagram marketing. So actually that's everything is combined (laughs) with the cake thing. Sick. So when I'm going to ha- ask you a question, um, what would you recommend in terms of branding to other food bloggers? What do you see that they're doing, r- most of them, not everyone, of course, what would you notice that they're doing wrong and you would say, like, this is very important? Uh, well, I wouldn't say that anyone is doing anything wrong because I think there's no wrong in art <laughs> and, and that's art. Like, it's it's creative work and um, I think that uh, a good advice like uh, with branding is to to have something that you become known for and for me at first it was um, being a cake artist like um, I don't really have a profession for that and it's actually not a profession it's not a you cannot go to school and graduate as a cake artist so I developed like um a job that I want to have, like, yeah, I want to be a cake artist, but it's also a brand that is really easy to remember. And, and also another thing I like, uh, during this year I have become known for is that I also include my cats in the cake photos. Yeah, so true. That, that's another thing. Like, like, um, brand is all about what uh, people are talking about you when you're not there. So what I want to communicate is, hey, that's the cake artist who has has the cats in the photos. <laughs> so there's a kind of like a really easy short story that people can talk about. And um, yeah, it's good to think like, what is your story? What is the thing that you wow. are known for? And that's how people will remember your your specific account, or for example, yeah. on Instagram. Yeah. Wow. That is a really good advice. Really, really good advice. Because indeed, every time I like, it's so easy to recognize your brand, as you say, because there's always your cats involved. And you immediately know, oh, that's Emma. Oh, how cute. And then, you know, I immediately like, press like, and I immediately know it's you and not the other blogger without even seeing the name. Yeah, very interesting. Sick. So now uh, about your cake um, artistry. I don't know if that's the word, but uh, I've noticed that you've done some really, really, really cool things. And I wanted to ask about one of them because it really got in my mind is you've been uh, you've been styling a cake for the Nespresso commercial, haven't you? Yeah. Uh, how when... did you get in there? Like, how did you land this? It's so cool. I think I saw the ad and it looks great. Yeah. So um it was a project that they were making a worldwide uh, TV commercial and they just wanted to make the best possible commercial. So they um, invited like uh, professionals from all the area. Like there, there was like a lot of people, everyone was an expert in something that way they were doing. And it was really, really interesting production to see. And, and yeah, they needed, specifically a cake stylist so they contacted me because i'm i'm in that niche of (laughs) being a cake professional so who someone who is really um like i target kind of in styling and And specifically cakes so then yeah that's that's how i got it like they needed someone from finland because the the commercial was shot in finland so, but uh, the production was like from the UK, the United States, Italy, France, and Finland. So there were people like all over the world and we're wow. making it together. But yeah, like um, uh, that's also about like how you build your brand. If you have like a small niche, it's then you, you yeah. get to do really special things when someone needs like especially a cake. Yeah. Finest. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. But then it's also, I mean, was it hard to, well, of course it was not easy to grow so specific within this one niche, especially in the beginning. 
in terms of also finding clients and, and how do you position yourself exactly in this niche, niche, niche as a specialist in the cake artistry? Art, I, I, don't, I don't know what the word is. It's a cake artist, yeah. stylist. <laughs> yeah, well, there, there was like a specific moment when I realized like, okay, now I need to um, decide how am I going to communicate what I do. And it was uh, the first magazine article that was ever published about me and when the it was actually a newspaper and the newspaper when they contacted me and they was like yeah can you design a halloween cake for their uh, article and i was like yeah that sounds great and and after the phone call i was like okay what am i gonna say to them like like who am i like i was studying civil engineering <laughs> and making cakes so i was like okay i need to that, like this is the chance to also um, communicate my brand and and uh, turn it into maybe something bigger. And then I just wrote on paper like words. What do I really want to be? And that's how mm. it became a cake artist. And in the headline of the article, they had cake artist Emma designed this <laughs> thing. So um, uh -huh. yeah, that that that's how I I kind of like found how to position myself and how to communicate wow. that and, and then things started to evolve after the first article mm -hmm. interesting so you grasped the opportunity and then you just made sure to follow through for, with it basically yeah, yeah. And, and I think it's really important to uh, look ahead like <laughs> there I was thinking like okay how how is this how could this affect like in like five years from now like what would yeah. I want to be? How could I use this to make things go forward? And and I always have a vision, like quite specific vision of where I'm going. And it's also a little bit crazy vision. Like I remember I, I talked on the phone with my dad and I was like, hey, I'm going to say that I am a cake artist. And he was like laughing, like, what is a cake artist? I've never heard of that. And I said, like, <laughs> I, I don't, I don't either. Like I just invented it, but that's that's what I want to be. <laughs> so, and yeah, and, and I thought that it's a good description of what I was doing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Wow. And now you're a cake artist and food photographer. How did they react to food photo photography? Because when I said that I'm going to be a food photographer, my parents just did not take that seriously at all, or friends, to be honest. And now food photography is such a big thing, big trend, to be honest. There's so many of us. Yeah, well, um, yeah, there were <laughs> many people in the circle, my, my social circle, who are like, uh, okay, what? So you're going to graduate as a Master of Science in technology, but you're going to be a cake artist and a food photographer. Um, it really didn't make sense. But what I've learned is like the best ideas, usually they don't seem like they would make sense in the beginning. Like like many of the world's best innovations is how they, they start like that. Like someone is laughing at the idea, like, like that doesn't make any sense. But I think it might be even a good sign, you know, then you're up to something yeah. that makes people be like, okay, what is this? And it's not a bad thing <laughs> no. in the end. <laughs> but of course, in the beginning, it's, it might be hard, you know, when you jump out of something and, and you kind of create a new vision for your own life. So I wouldn't say it's easy, but no. but it's um yeah um it's good not to be too afraid and then just do no. what you like like to do and love to do and and i Especially, think that's, yeah yeah and if you put a lot of work and um you're passionate about it i mean i think everything is possible yeah exactly yeah. like i think there's always a business for something that you do from your heart like yeah even super niche yeah, yeah, even super niche. <laughs> nice. Awesome. But so uh, you've mentioned you don't do any more cake, um, like cake decorating for others, but you still photograph it. So how does that work? Uh, yeah, so I photograph, um, for example, like cake art for commercials or, or mm -hmm. if there's like a piping set of, decorating tools you know i i take photos of the decorated cakes and then so for the for the books and then like social media collaborations and 
Mm -hmm. uh, that way. But, but does it mean you only photograph um, for the sweets, well, cakes and cake products and everything? Or do you photograph as well for other food products? Uh, yes, also uh, some like savory foods, but yeah, mostly mostly sweet things but yeah so you're very niche as well for the food photography basically yeah. you you became known also for food photography as a photographer of cakes yeah yeah it was like first the cakes and then i think the clients noticed like okay we can also order the photography from her mm -hmm. like it, it became a package but uh yeah i've done uh some package photography for like um like this uh salty pastries and like homemade pasta and so also so all kind of food <laughs> yeah but did that came as well from the same brand that had sweets and you photographed before or is that completely different brand um uh a different brand and uh okay. i've been uh working with some film companies in helsinki also um as a producer like for international sales just because uh, of this consulting thing I'm doing and uh, some of the projects have become like from them like they needed someone for an advertising video to cook something or style the food so <laughs> it, it can come from different sources <laughs> right <laughs> and different right brands so from and, different. yeah but I was wondering indeed like if this super specialization as well in the uh, food photography would be um, helpful to become a super specialist in one type of even in the within food photography photography so like what you're saying in terms of the cakes which is probably the case with you isn't it like if somebody in finland would be looking really specifically for the cake food photographer you would be one of the ones to come up i imagine or is that not the case uh yeah i i think so it's um yeah, I think I mostly get the clients because it's so special and specifically cakes. So, so I, I think for all food photographers, it's really good to develop like something that you specialize in. Yeah. Because then, you know, there's always someone who needs needs a specialist something, and then always, if, you know, yeah. if you have kind of the the whole service of like, yeah, you're really good at styling this specific thing and yeah. taking the photos then it's like yeah it's easy to sell the work because <laughs> then you match what they are looking for exactly yeah and not even in terms of you know the dish but it can be in terms of specific way you photograph or i've seen um yeah. on tiktok because now i'm on the tiktok but i've seen there uh there is a company that does a slow motion video of food which i thought is also extremely yeah. super specific but then they get like super crazy big projects because they're so specifically good at that one thing. And I find yeah. that very interesting. So I find very interesting how you're as well positioning yourself. I think it's really, I think it's really smart. Yeah. 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 And that sounds like a great idea. The slow motion. <laughs> video, I know, but it's, right? very, it's very special. And yeah, when there's a client and they're looking exactly for that, then they know like who to work with. And they yeah. also like, I, I think it builds trust, right? you know, they like to order from someone they can see that, oh, this is very special. Like, I yeah. know that they are really good at it, good at this, because yeah. they have concentrated on this. So, yeah, super. Nice. Um, then I have another question for you, Emma, is I've seen that you've been featured a lot in the press. Uh, so I was wondering if you have a specific strategy for that. Do you target the press or do they find you or do you have some tips there? Um, I think like, uh, so I don't, I don't have a strategy and it's usually that, well, it's, it's always that the press, they contact me. Um, but where it started was that uh, I was elected as the artisan of the moment uh, for the Craft Museum of Finland. And I got a cake art exhibition in a museum that lasted for one year. So that was when the media was like, okay, how is it possible to have cake art in the museum? And it, it became like a really huge media thing. And that's how like the media got to know me because it was everywhere in the television and all the newspapers. And, and I think like, 
it already started then. And of course, like, because I've been writing books, like usually the publishers, they send all the new books to the media. So then the media contacts me like, oh, it's a nice book. We want to make an article. And, and after writing many books, it kind of like, I I have like, uh, connections to media that have been there for years and they like every year they <laughs> call again like okay do you want to be in this story and and uh, I also uh, participated the uh, tv show the whole of Finland Bakes which is the wow. um, originally BBC format for the great biggest uh, British bake-off uh-huh. and uh, so that was also like when the media was writing a lot about the TV show because it was the first season in Finland. So, right. so I think it's just that sounds all, like this, fun. <laughs> all this together. So nice. Yeah. Oh, that sounds like fun. But wait, wait, wait! I want to come back to the cake exhibition. How does that work? Like cake styling exhibition? I mean, are there fake cakes there, or how does it stay good for a year? Yeah, like for the museum thing, of course, like we needed to think because it was the first time it was some person working with food who would uh, win that award because before it used to be anything, handcraft things like um, so. And what we came up with was that uh, I did all the decoration uh, with like a sugar paste that can keep for a long time it's all edible like all the flowers and everything is edible Mm -hmm. but in the inside like I had to put like just um, something like that is not edible to keep it uh, in the museum for a a long time so but that's how we we were able to present the art uh, part of the cakes and still have it in the museum but actually what happened after six months was that there was um some ventilation problem in the museum and they they melted and I had to like oh, no. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> like redo the decoration but you know it's food anything can happen so yeah but but, oh. but still it was an amazing experience and oh I can and, imagine you know, wow. like feel so grateful for it to be elected and it sounds amazing so it was some sort of competition uh no it wasn't a competition and um uh, yeah, the strange thing was that I had already only started like posting um, pictures of my cakes on my blog like six months before, and mm-hmm. then they sent me this email like, "Yeah, you have been chosen as the artisan of the moment," and and I was like, "This must have came to the wrong address, like, because I didn't even have a company yet, and they usually choose um, people who have been working with their craft for like." 20 years like and there were like brain surgeons or like um uh, people designing clothes and and stuff like that and and, but then I called back and they were like yeah yeah we uh chose you and it was because of the photography actually they said that because you have also like not the well they loved the the style of my cake art but also that that the food photography was so good that Mm -hmm. in the end like they because they wanted to choose someone from the food industry so wow. <laughs> actually food photography was such a critical thing there to change my life like that definitely changed my life because then the media got so um interested in my work yeah. and so I got a lot of publicity for the work wow amazing yeah oh, <laughs> really like yeah. <laughs> what a turning point and, and what a yeah what an unexpected luck in yeah. a way right yeah which you also like, I, see full on which is great yeah. I, yeah I would have never ever believed I still remember the moment I was like 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 physically jumping in the air like what is happening but then I realized like yeah it's just when you do something with a passion and you yeah. do it and you do your best that's how it resonates and it yeah. still feels so incredible like yeah, and, and I I feel happy that I decided to just <laughs> spend my time on decorating cakes like a crazy person because like <laughs> in the yeah. end it, it did re- resonate in such a massive way. Wow, so, yeah. oh, that's so exciting! <laughs> that is so exciting, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. Awesome. Okay. Um, 
Then another question I have for you. I have some prepared nice questions. Um, what is your main uh, source of inco income right now? And would you say that's photography? Uh, yeah, food, photography, uh, coaching, and this consulting. Coaching. Yeah, consulting with the brands. And then um, uh, I have this uh, bakeware uh, collection. Oh, so that's yeah. also, also part of the income. So yeah, that I think that's the tree. <laughs> but then bake the, the collection that you have, um, that's well, now I kind of know the answer, isn't it? It's, it also came from the fact that you're um, an expert in cake styling. So did they reach out to you, the brand, or did you reach out to them? Um, they first reached out to me in the beginning of my blogging career. And well, we did some blog collaborations. And after that, they started to order uh, recipes and photography for their products so it was like I was working with them for many years and then they wanted to have like a, a, a like a personal brand for their baking uh, collection and then we started yeah. to uh, make that happen together and, and yeah, yeah it was like a long time of working with the same company and then that's how it's oh, that's really happened. lovely though yeah nice. But that also came, yeah, sort of from the, like, damn, that specialization is never, what I, well, I started thinking about it also a couple of weeks ago about how to become more specialized. So that's really interesting that I'm speaking to you right now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, anyways. Um, okay. Yeah. So photography and this collection. Um, but how do you then, because you also do consultancy at the same time. How do you manage everything at once? I mean, that sounds like a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does. Sound like a lot of work, um, but I th the thing is that everything goes together. So um, <laughs> it sounds strange, but when I do consulting, even for like um, that, we might have had projects with like even ministers and the government of Finland, and uh, <clears throat> I always have pictures of cakes on my slides, <laughs> and <laughs> that's also like um, I use it as a, as a way to keep people interested in what I'm talking about because they are the same like wow what is what are these cakes like it's kind of like a good um, fun thing uh, but then I, I teach them how I have built my company and yeah. I, I teach them the techniques that I use to um, be creative and be innovative and it's uh, many of these mindset techniques I've been studying for like 10 years so I kind of teach them what I've been doing, even though it's a different kind of setting and it's government work, but the process in our brain to create something new, be reactive, it's it's the same process, even for if you're a scientist or an artist. So yeah. actually, it everything goes very smoothly together. That's so <laughs> fun. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because it's all, it's all about creativity and business and you can apply the same principles. Yeah on every part of it yeah yeah exactly. wow. nice okay um then one of the last questions is um um what are the artists that inspire you the most what would you say like the bloggers or instagrammers or maybe a book even like what inspires you what inspires me hmm, there are so many things like um I read a lot of books and I think like what affects most my work, even though it's not specifically art, but like uh, these coaches who, who coach people how to be creative. And I would say my favorites, for example, Robin Sharma, like um, I've been reading his books and, and I think it's, it's really, really inspiring. And uh, I read a lot of things from Mind Valley, which is a company that brings together these inspired inspirational speakers and um, people who are teaching um, like how to do whatever you want in life, you know. <laughs> and so yeah. there, there's a lot of a lot of those people. Yeah, Mind Valley is very inspiring to me. And and with art, um, I would say that I'm inspired by um, other artists that I follow on Instagram, for example, uh, Carolina Cruz.
Gruner is one of my inspirations. She's a Finnish uh, painter. And but I think like there, there are like so many sources. It can be anything. I love to go to art uh, exhibitions and I, I getting inspired of like uh, really traditional art and pop art and <laughs> and everything. And I, I try to uh, bring the inspiration from other places. Then like if I want to get inspired of food photography, I don't. It might not be that I look at food photos. It might be that I'm looking at like a 18th century painting. So wow. uh, like bring in inspiration from different sources. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and where do you but, look then for most paintings? Is that Pinterest or how do you find those? Let's say if you if you want to get inspired by old paintings. Well, um, my grandfather is an artist and I used to love to look at all the art books he had from when I was a young child and I have uh, some of his books still and I I, I read even still uh, the art books with him and uh, yeah it's the old art books that's like <laughs> what I nice. love, to, love to look at yeah there's everything like Leonardo da Vinci, Monet um, yeah like the old <laughs> fashion guys <laughs> nice Oh, you're a true artist. I mean, you're a painter as well. I've seen your art. It's gorgeous. Thank you so much. <laughs> That's like another business that you have, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's a, um, I have currently an exhibition in Miami. Of course, yeah. like people are not allowed to go to the gallery. <laughs> but, but luckily, I got to uh, spend... Uh, the, in December, there was uh, this Miami Art Week, which, which is the biggest contemporary art event in the world. So I, I had an exhibition there and I went to Miami and it was just a massive amount of inspiration, like like so much art, like thousands of artists and their exhibitions and street art and pop art and abstract everything. And uh, it was so inspiring. <laughs> wow. I think like that also... Uh, the work that I'm doing now, I got a lot of inspiration from the Art Week and it was one of the best experiences of my life and, and such an honor to be part of that with my oh, I can so. imagine. How did that happen then? How did you get in the Miami exhibition then? Uh, this uh, gallery uh, called uh, Zenit Art and Fashion, it's one of the award-winning galleries in Miami. Uh, they contacted me, they sent me an email like, we love your work and they said that it would fit perfectly into the selection of art they have in the gallery and mm -hmm. then we made a contract and I sent the paintings wonderful. to the USA and then I, I went there during the art week and it was absolutely amazing. <laughs> Oh, that's wonderful. That sounds wonderful. All right, Emma. Well, thank you so much for this wonderful conversation. Um, the last question would be, where can the listeners find you? I can be found on Instagram. <laughs> Emma Ivane is my Instagram account. There's everything. Art, cats, and cakes. <laughs> nice. Awesome. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Thank you, Emma. Thank you for this wonderful conversation. Thank you so much. It was so lovely to talk to you.